I'm Martin Roster, District Manager with the Mine Safety and Health Administration, Metal and Nonmetal. And I'm Ray McKinney, District Manager for Coal. We in the metal and nonmetal mining industry had a great number of accidents involving off-road haulage trucks just like this. Martin, we've experienced the same problem. The off-road haulage trucks are much larger today and much more complex. It takes a great deal of knowledge and expertise to inspect these trucks. The following video will show the steps necessary an inspector has to take in order to make a good, thorough inspection. We also need to emphasize the importance for the inspectors to protect themselves when they are inspecting these vehicles. When conducting truck inspections, ensure that the truck is not loaded, secured from movement, and in a safe, level area. This video presents a typical sequence of inspection procedures for off-road haulage trucks. Your inspection sequence may vary from the one shown here depending on conditions and type of truck. Regardless of your inspection sequence, be sure to check all components that affect safety. It is also critical that you perform this inspection in a safe manner. Select a safe location for performing your inspection. Find a level surface away from traffic. Always approach the vehicle with caution. Avoid immediately climbing on the vehicle. Instead, have the driver set the park brake and shut off the engine. Greet the driver and identify yourself. Explain that you will be conducting a safety inspection. Have the driver climb down and ask if there are any problems with the truck. Before performing an inspection, the truck must be properly secured from movement. You begin your inspection with a thorough check of tires and wheels. Look for loose or missing lugs, or cracked or bent rims. Check the tires for exposed plies, deep cuts, bulges, and abnormal wear. Also look for proper inflation because low tire pressure can cause poor steering response, overheating, or a blowout. Check the engine compartment for trash, tools, rags, and anything that could jam controls or cause a fire. Check fan and V-belt drives for proper guarding. Check the steering components for excessive wear or movement, including the steering jacks and bushings, tie rod and tie rod ends, and look for any fluid leaks. Also check the suspension. Several different types of suspension systems are used on off-road haulage trucks. Haulers equipped with gas-charged suspension cylinders should be checked for loose mountings and leaks. If springs are used, check for indications of misaligned, shifted, or cracked springs, missing or loose bolts, spring hangers unsecured at frame, and cracked or loose U-bolts. If equipped with A-arms and torque rods, check for cracks and loose pins. Inspect all fluid carrying lines for cracks, brakes, rubbing, or loose fittings. The steering, braking, and other controls depend upon hydraulic force, so it's important that there be no leaks, brakes, or loose fittings. The truck's braking system should be checked for missing, loose, cracked, or non-functioning parts, such as loose belts, leaking hydraulic lines, leaks in wheel cylinders, brake linings or pads saturated with oil, grease, or brake fluid, excessive wear or cracks in rotors and brake pads, or drums and linings, and loose or missing air chamber mounting bolts. You must also be alert for the sound of air leaks. Look under the vehicle to check the condition of the drivetrain components. Make certain there are no loose U-clamps or missing bolts. 
Check the truck frame for cracks or broken welds. Look at the mounting of the hoist jacks and pins to determine if there are any cracks or missing keeper bolts. Look for any fluid leaks and check the hydraulic tank mounting. As you move to the rear of the truck to continue your inspection, check the other tires and wheels. This inspection will include checking the braking assembly to determine if the brake valves, pressure converters, and lines are secure with no loose or missing parts, and looking for any fluid leaks. At the rear of the truck, you will also examine the truck bed for rubbing marks, cracks, or other defects, such as broken welds, bed mountings, or pins that might indicate problems in the operation of the truck. Check for lights and mountings, making certain the light units are clean and in good condition. And inspect the reverse backup alarm and mounting to ensure that it is not damaged. Check the exhaust system for leaks and defects. As you continue your inspection on the right side of the truck, check the tires and wheels, suspension, brakes, frame and bed, fuel tank, engine compartment, and other systems and components as you have already done at the rear and left side of your vehicle. While checking the area around the machine, inspect the service lights for damage. Look for broken lenses or conditions that will reduce visibility. Every step of the inspection is important. Before climbing onto the truck, make sure the steps, handrails, and handholds are free from mud, grease, ice, snow, and any other materials that could cause a slip or fall. Also check the ladders and handrails for looseness, bent parts, or cracked welds. Check out your shoes and gloves, too. Muddy or greasy shoes and gloves will keep you from getting a sound footing and a firm grip. Check fire extinguisher if located near base of ladder and fire suppression systems if equipped. As you climb up the ladder, use the steps and handholds correctly. Nothing should be carried in your hands while ascending or descending ladders. Don't take shortcuts to reach the cab and face the machine when climbing on or off. Before entering the cab, check the cab protector and rock deflector for broken welds and cracks in the struts or braces. Make sure the windows are clean and free of cracks that might impair visibility, and that the wiper blades are in good condition. Examine the exterior mirrors and mountings for damage or defects, and check the door latches to make certain they open and close correctly. The next procedure is the cab inspection. Give the cab a good visual inspection. Check for obscured visibility. Look for trash, tools, or any loose objects which could jam a control or be tossed around if the truck should stop suddenly or become involved in an accident. Check the fire extinguisher if it's located in the cab. It should be fastened securely in place and fully charged. Inspect ROPs or rollover protection if equipped. And check condition of seat belts. Once again, be sure the parking brake is set. While in the cab with the driver, notice if the seat belt is being worn properly. Ask the driver to start the engine. Driver, would you start your engine? Notice if the driver sounds the horn before starting the engine. After the engine starts, check gauges for oil pressure air buildup, low air warning device, or test LED system if used. Ask the driver to function test all controls. Okay, at this time, would you function test your controls? Okay. Ask the driver to turn on wipers to see that they are operating properly. All right, would you turn your wipers on, please? Okay. Determine that the park brake is set, and then dismount the truck and walk around it to check if the lights are working. Next, 
ask the driver to test the backup alarm. The backup alarm should sound automatically when the transmission is placed in reverse. And it must be audible above the surrounding noise level in the blind area. The next inspection is of the emergency steering. This check applies only to those trucks that have an emergency or auxiliary steering system of a type that can be checked. Ask the driver to shut off the engine and check the emergency steering in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. If the emergency steering is functioning properly, have driver turn off the switch and proceed with the rest of the inspection. Have the driver apply the service brakes and check for air leaks with the brakes applied. The purpose of this video is to aid you in your inspections of haulage trucks used on mine property. It is designed to supplement more in-depth instruction that will be conducted on proper inspection procedures. Your supervisor will provide you with additional information based on regulations and manufacturer's specifications.